Field Runway is a class in which 30 plus students on four teams, branding, production, communication, and creative, work together to produce a fashion show. The most drastic change that we've seen in the evolution of this class was from 2020 to 2021, where we like, with COVID, it kind of accelerated what was going on in the fashion industry. I would explain to people and just say that this class is basically where the best of the best students come from. Like, it doesn't matter if you're fashion, if you're digital media, if you're comm. It's like JM takes the best of the best when he has these interviews with everyone in this application process. So, for me, I would say that this class really does um, prepare you for the industry when you're working in teams, when you're working with other people, when pushing you to be your most creative. SNR is so much more than a fashion class. I mean, it's a class for anyone that is willing to come in and just bring something new to the table. You know, you obviously, we are presenting fashion content, but anybody can come and bring a perspective. And one of the amazing things about Maris is that we are a school of liberal art, where there's all these people talking about different things. I mean, we have people who are majoring in English in the class, right? And they are bringing storytelling, for example. We have people who are majoring in graphic design and animation, and they are bringing those skills uh, into the class and their perspective of it all. So, Fashion is the theme, in a way, but then everything else is, can be anything. We've gotten so innovative and creative in all aspects of the show, whether it be the promo videos, the videography, the lookbook, the virtual shows. We've really taken this entire experience with what we've been given. We've totally changed the way SNR is and the way SNR has been in years past. The brand we've created in the past has been something amazing and it's always been this SNR brand, but I think this year there's so much more that goes behind it because of all the, I guess, new positions not only we brought on, but also the new tasks, tasks we've taken on. Like we've said, we're more than a show, just like the podcast, we are more than just a show. We're creators, we're doers, we're leaders. It's not just models walking down a runway. So, again, start thinking about all the different things that we know about the semester I think that we really looked at the fashion landscape and how it changed and I we realized that a lot of it has pivoted towards digital media and so we wanted to find different ways to incorporate that. This year we saw how successful in CMA was which was our um, video we did with some Italian designers last year and so we wanted to kind of follow that same format so that's why we really wanted to do a vit virtual show on top of our in-person show because we know how important that virtual aspect is especially when um, we are unable to have outside guests in the industry so that way we can get that industry exposure. I also think just adding that storytelling aspect shows like our theme like it's more than fashion like we don't want to just show random garments in our promo video we want to show an entire story so we just Similar to our thing, we just want to expand beyond the world of a simple fashion show. We want to be so much more this year. So this one, I'm going to be over here. So you have, if, you, if you could just like move to the side, right? okay. just for now. So I'm going to just go in that room back there. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. And I can just look in the School and JM really allows us to like, and pushes to us that any idea is possible and nothing is too big and you can make it happen. And luckily we have like the budget to make it happen. Um, so it's really cool that like you can have a huge idea that you think is gonna cost thousands of dollars and we'll never be able to execute and JM will look at you and be like, yeah, that's cool, like let's figure it out, research that. 
So we're innovative because JM lets us be. A lot of the people within our team, given that a lot of us are digital media based students, that's kind of our field of study for the most part. This was the first like fashion class that a lot of us have taken. So in a sense, like we had people on our team who are fashion based. and I think that helped a lot to kind of guide us in the right direction because the digital media students are bringing something that this fashion program, this class has never really experienced in such like an intense way with all like the promo videos we're doing, the virtual show, the short film, everything that we've been doing, the designer interviews, like it's just a crazy amount of stuff, but it really was like such a, not necessarily even a, like it was like kind of a collaboration, like a unified building of one another. Like people on like the fashion side were getting, like learning how to edit and people on the digital media side were learning things about fashion. Like Ale, for example, right. he um, had experience with the lookbook and had the guidance from like Caitlin, Eliza, um, Andra, um, I'm not sure who else, but yeah, so. I'm sure there are more. Um, but in that sense, like, yes, we were new to it, but we also brought a new type of experience and knowledge that the fashion class wasn't aware of. And I think, in a sense, we kind of taught each other in that way. Confidence and trust are probably the two biggest hurdles that you face as a director. Confidence because you're in a leadership position. You, it's so important that, for me, I see leadership as leading by example. Somebody who is a positive, you know, force in the class. Somebody who can motivate, you know, their, their fellow directors and their teammates and like all of that. But I also think that trust is really hard because for so long when you're in this class and you're a coordinator or an assistant, you're being told what to do and you build up those skills and that's what's really amazing about this class. But when you're a director, you kind of have to start, you have to delegate tasks to other people. So you may have worked with a couple people before in the class, but for the most part, it's new know, people every year. Take, like, the scale of like the venue too, you know what I mean? Like it's her and... Because you have close-ups. Yeah, she, you can, she can even have her start before, so you have room for her to have already like the, the speed. So, no, so you stay the same, right? But you give her some more room, right? So you still like focusing here, but you give her more room to get her stride. Match cut. So we're good with them. Carry on, we're good. Okay. Let's look right into that. Last shot. So the Payne Mansion has become a second home for us, I think. Um, partly because the mansion's like meant to be used and lived in, so we're allowed to eat and drink and sit on the furniture. Um, and then secondly, because again, we've just gone through a lot together there um, as a team and as directors. Uh, we've had a lot, a lot, a lot, probably a bulk of our work has surrounded the virtual show and getting all of that together and we're also just very lucky that we're allowed to use the pain mansion they don't you know the college doesn't let it, people use it often so we go through the day by mom so like it would be like caitlin 9 30 makeup 10 o'clock hair 11 o'clock dining room and give them each each of the models their own schedule plus give everyone on the team our master schedule yeah and then but then uh, you, you and guys, then look book you got yeah you guys have a creative team though you need to figure out uh, exactly kevin have an idea you know the space right yeah kind of ideas how you want each models to be filmed like you need to know that you need a minimum of three angles mm -hmm. and then one of them needs to be my favorite part of SNR is being on the trenches, be it at the Pain Mansion on those two st on those three days that we film, uh, being here yesterday and today, running around, getting everything done, getting get, uh, doing all of that. It's not even the show itself. So right now we're setting up. This is like shot for scene six, and we have our model right here, and it's gonna be kind of like nightmare vibe. That's kind of what we're going for. Yeah. So this is what. What? 
switching hallways? Sorry. I don't know the place. Okay. <laughs> Follow us. We can't try it? No. I'm almost done. Do you like this? I do like this. But then what do you think the wrong on the floor? It's just the vibe. I don't mind it. Can we switch the bedroom? Steven, are you happy Thank with that? No. <laughs> So as far as the creative differences that we've experienced throughout this whole process, it hasn't been like something that's been bad or annoying necessarily. It's just something that I, th I think it's important. And like, I think everyone who kind of is in a creative field, they have to understand that one, you have to understand and listen to what professionals are telling you. You have to listen to their advice. Like JM, for example, like we certainly like, not necessarily butt heads, but he gave me suggestions that didn't necessarily align with what I wanted initially. Like for the virtual show, we had a completely different vision as far as what we wanted to do. And after him explaining like, not necessarily what's like traditional because we always are trying to be different. We're trying to do something new, but he kind of broadened the scope for us a little bit to understand the full aspect of what we're supposed to focus on. And through that, we were able to understand it better. I think that's inclusive for like the whole team, not just me. So. In that way, like the creative differences that we had, I think was a great learning lesson because, you know, at some point you have to kind of sacrifice some of what you want, but it also gives you an opportunity to challenge yourself to think differently, to move on. Yeah. All right. Because it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you go on one end or another, because the whole thing looks kind of the same. Got it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So maybe like, at the end of the day, it was so relieving and so satisfying because of what we did that day and that we actually got through it. So we were all faced with this challenge that was like very new to us, very different. But when we like got everything done, we were moving along. It's almost like you're just so focused. You don't even think about like eating at that point. You're just like so focused. You don't think about drinking anything. You're just focused. You're not tired at that point. It's almost like, it's almost like a, like a survivor response or something like that. It's weird. Um, very satisfied with what we did today. Um, very proud of our team. We all came together, got everything done that we needed to, which is exciting. And looking forward to the next time that we shoot. But yeah, very tired though too. But energized at the same time. Me and Kennedy, production directors, we were very prepared. We had everything laid out. Who are hair and makeup artists are gonna be? Who are models are gonna be? Who is dressing what model? What time the hair and makeup people are gonna get there? We had everything mapped out, like you couldn't believe. And we were still so overwhelmed it was so chaotic we i mean things that were out of our control you know like hair and makeup artists showing up 30 minutes late like you can't rely you can't really rely on everyone we know that <laughs> garments not fitting a model the way we wanted to um not communicating with our other directors on where we wanted this model to go at what time it was just really really chaotic and no matter how much we all prepared we had never done a virtual shoot we had never done anything like that so that was really out of our control but we did the first shoot, we knew how to prepare better for the second shoot, and then for the third shoot, it was like, you know, it was like the back of our hands, like we knew what we were doing. Um, and it was executed so well, and I remember like when all our models were dressed, my production team, we were sitting there for like, we had nothing to do, because we, we knew what we were doing, we dressed the models, the hair and makeup was done, and we were like, okay, what now? And we just sat there, and it was just, I was just, I remember looking around and being like, if this is anything like what the day of show is gonna be like, it's gonna be the smoothest, seamless process there is. Whew. This past year alone, I feel like I have grown just so much as a person. Just realizing that all the challenges, all of the obstacles, all of the tears are, are worth it because I know that the, the things that I'm doing in this class will serve me so so well in the professional world I feel like I mean hey if we can put on a fashion show in a pandemic then I can really handle anything at this point SNR taught me that there's no limit when you work hard um, because I think myself and a lot of people in this class probably never thought that they would make it to this class or become directors and it really gives you that confidence that your hard work will bring you somewhere. As a brand and director for the Silver Needle Runway in 2021, like something that I've just kind of waited, I guess I've waited kind of my whole life to do something like this. Like I've waited my whole life to finally be like 
accepted, appreciated for like this crazy creativity I've had and finally like I'll strut down that runway and like it'll be accepted. Well, this year particularly has been such a unique year. You know, last year we had uh, everything taken away, in a way, you know, not by anyone in person, in particular, but the, uh, the whole situation with COVID, you know, mid-semester, everybody had to go home and we sort of had to adapt, the student had to sort of like reinvent everything and, and come up with, a, with, with whatever they could, right? Whereas this year we were able to plan for the worst, but everything was up in the air. The entire semester, everything was up in the air. So being here and seeing that it all sort of happened the way we wanted it, you know, we have achieved so much. But being able to see that the students kind of like get to that place where wow we're making everything happen there's not one thing that we failed at that's pretty amazing and I'm just so proud I mean you don't even know I'm so proud of all the students and what they've done and and to me that that's mission accomplished uh, it's when, when I see not just the result but I also see like they got it they got it in their head like okay it wasn't just achieving the project but getting so much more the collaboration the values and you got it to me that's you know that's the success of the class is the student understanding what it all means at the end of the day not just you know doing a beautiful fashion show I'm gonna tell you one secret, right? I only dress fashion when I come to school. Just because that's my uniform, it's my, you know. I go home, I live on a farm, I put my rubber boots, I'm in uh, chicken and goat and alpaca poop. You know, I have like six huge dogs that, you know, they stink, they come in the house, they sleep on the bed, so. Uh, I'm like in t-shirts, shorts, you know, I'm like, it's totally not. Uh, but when I come to work, or when I go to the city, because I have this other like city life too, it's you know, it's like I have like these different uniforms for like different things. But yeah, yeah, it's okay. They can know. And that's why it's most memorable. So uh, this kid tells me that you're kind of like a dad figure. <laughs> 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 That was awesome. Sorry I thought I was gonna cry. cry more, but no. <laughs> no, I think that's it. Was it? It was good. Thank you. Appreciate that. <sighs> was I better? Was I more calm? Is my shirt poofed up enough? Wait, should I take my mask off? No obstacle is too big for S and R. Hey.